Hi, today I'm going to make another video about this uh, Math3 3D scanner for matter and forms. I will uh, make a 3D scan of this Coke can and I will scan with the color texture. Surface of this can is really reflective. The scanner can uh, scan this object uh, without spray, uh, but the result surface will be a, a little rougher. For the best result, I'm going to spray it uh, for a thin layer. Uh, I add some lighting here so that uh, it gives a little brighter uh, color. So I'm going to add a new scan. Uh, looks like uh, we are a bit too far. So I'm going to move the scanner closer to the object. Put uh, you see the uh, upper edge of the projector. I put it uh, as low as possible because this object is tall. If I push it lower, I can move it closer. So now it will be uh, as close as I would get, and then I will align the camera, align the scanner. So that the left and the right will be about the same at the center. Uh, next, I'm going to uh, move the focus point, and then I'm going to do the uh, exposure testing in a single shot. Uh, so I will click here, and I will adjust the uh, exposure like so. And I'm going to uh, make sure that I click on uh, capture texture. I will turn off the turntable so that I can make a single shot scan looks like uh, some missing part here maybe it's too bright maybe I should adjust the uh, exposure down a bit so uh, let's try with the uh, lower exposure uh, okay the second setting is better uh, the surface is a bit rough uh, I'm going to turn the turntable back on Okay, next I'm going to uh, calibrate the turntable. Next, put. Okay, note that uh, when they are doing the calibration, they use RGB camera without uh, projecting any light. So if you um, calibrate the turntable in a dark room, you're gonna need to turn on the light. going to put the can here uh, start the scan this can has a no feature it's round and symmetry uh, this scanner knows the position of the rotation axis of the turntable so it can stitches the egg scan together uh, without additional help from marker tracker or a feature tracker so i don't have to put anything on the turntable to help it tracks first scan is complete okay this is the first scan you can see that they separate each scan into a different color and you can manage to uh, turn on or turn off uh, each scan individually and this preview of the textures is also come into um, display this is just a preview okay now we have a missing part uh, the top so I'm going to add a new scan for uh, scanning the top and the bottom of the can and then we merge it, click on add the scan I'm going to adjust the scanner position because the top of the can is a bit taller so I'm going to move it here just a bit okay so I want to uh, be able to uh, make a scan on the top and see if we need to spray it or not so i'm going to adjust the focus point here there was a one warning that i need to calibrate the, the turntable so i will adjust the brightness down all the way here see if it can capture turn off the turntable let's do the scan so 
Testing. You can see that it's very visible. Top of the can. Uh, let's try with the uh, higher for sure. Brighter, brighter, too bright. Okay, let's try this. For sure. Okay, a little bit better. Let's uh, try to increase it just a bit. See if it uh, will do any better. I think it's blow out here. It's too bright. Let's try. Okay, with the uh, 270 exposure. Uh, this area is burned out. It's not captured. Let's try again with a spray one. I'm going to adjust the exposure down a bit because it's spray. Okay, let's try with the spray one. Smoother and more complete. Okay, let's scan it. Okay, make uh, turn the turntable on. Actually, I want to adjust a little bit more. Calibrate the uh, turntable. Grab here. I'm going to to the center. Going to start the scan. So I also scan the top part of the can for uh, overlapping. Okay, it's done. Okay, let's take a look at the result here. So now we have everything. Okay, let's scan the bottom of the can. So we just uh, flip it over like so. So I'm going to adjust the uh, exposure a bit. Let's try. Okay, next process will be uh, merging all three parts together. Uh, this scanner has a special ability to merge uh, multiple scan by using the texture as a reference. So I'm going to use that feature. I cannot do auto merging because there's overlap area. It's not that much. So I'm going to use the pick point. We are going to pick uh, reference points from each scan. So I'm going to merge the second scan to the first scan. Okay, here we come to uh, uh, this window. In other scanner, you're going to need like uh, markers uh, for referencing the merging point. Uh, but this scanner, uh, you can use the texture to merge that. So I'm going to choose this one, top of the letter C, and put it here. Two, I'm going to put it here. Two corner of this rectangle and for the fourth one let's find it fourth one I'm gonna put it here okay and the align buttons will come up click it send it away just a little bit okay it look like it um, it doesn't take long we have aligned the top of the can let's turn off the texture now the top of the can is perfectly aligned not only the geometry but also the texture aligned to the main body of the can okay next i will align the bottom of the can to the main body of the can so click on pick point first select the main body and then i select the bottom of the can i'm gonna turn on the texture okay it looks like not much to merge into let's try if it will work okay so it's the letter here i'm gonna use it one i lower the exposure for um, scanning this bottom part is quite bright three the last one let's see if it can do it four right let's align it okay looks like it align let's check the texture yeah texture also align even though it's captured with very few of the texture okay next step will be uh, merge the scan i'm gonna merge one two three together 
Okay, it's quick. Uh, this medium and high setting. If I choose high setting, I'm gonna get like a 9 million uh, polygonals. Too much time for waiting. So I'm gonna demonstrate with the medium setting. Click on a mesh. This will close all the openings. But there is no option uh, for you to choose. They're gonna close it with um, a curvature. It's gonna look like it's ballooned out. Okay, the meshing process is complete. Uh, the, uh, the scanner try to close the holes. Click on the remesh command. I will get uh, 840,000 uh, polygons. It's gonna take like 10 minutes. Uh, let's time it. I'm going to um, put on a timer. Okay, it takes about 7 minutes to complete the remesh process. Uh, the surface is a little bit uh, smoother after rematch. So next I'm going to texturize it, add the color back into the model. Uh, this step won't take long because uh, this 3D scanner it has a 13 megapixels RGB camera that used for both uh, tracking the structure light and also taking the photographs of the texture. So that texture quality is uh, higher than other scanner. Okay, texture is done. If I slide back on, see that. But the color is doesn't look like the original object. Look, uh, the lead is much darker than it should. I will show you how I fix the color of the texture, add it to the project, and then I will export it in uh, OBJ format so that I can extract the texture for fixing the color. Click on export. Okay, when you open the zip folder that export from the MAF3 scanner, there are three files. One is the OBJ files, which is the geometry of the model. And first one is the material files. And the third one uh, is the texture file. If you look at the texture files from the MAF3 scanner, it's saved in PNG files. And the size is quite big for the 3, 3D scanner is 4.9 megabyte. You open it for a preview. It has one image and uh, shot in the six separate side and their mapping it's uh, really unique. I mean uh, you can still see the text and the shape of the object from the texture. So it's uh, easier to uh, repair or fix the uh, texture if something is not right. In this example, it's the color. If you look at the color, it's the light is uh, much uh, brighter than the one that come from the uh, 3D scanner. And the uh, letters uh, looks all right, but the lead color is uh, way off. I'm gonna drop this object into uh, a ray tracing scene to see uh, what it look like. Uh, when it's render. So I'm going to fix the uh, texture color by using the photo editing software. Yeah, in this case, I'm gonna edit it in the Affinity Photo. And you're gonna need the pen tablet. Let me grab that one. I'm going to open the original pictures that I take this one with the DSLR camera. I'm gonna use the eyedrop uh, tools for uh, cloning the color. Clone this one on the top here. Now the color shade is copy. So I move back uh, to the coke hand. And then I'm going to select uh, the wrong color, the darker red. And I'm going to adjust the tolerance. The default value is 15%. So I'm going to select this and hit apply. And I'm going to create a new uh, fill layer and I'm going to fill it with the color that I selected. Now, can we have a matching color with uh, the one from the photograph? I will turn off the original color from the texture and erase the part that is wrong. So the top of the can shouldn't have uh, any red color. So I'm going to erase it. And also the bottom of the can, it shouldn't have any red color. So I'm going to use the eraser tools to uh, erase it. And the barcode, look at the barcode. It's supposed to be in a black color. So I'm going to um, delete it, right? And here too. Okay, top of the can should be black color. It's nothing is red here. So I'm going to delete it. Bottom of the can too, all right? Uh, turning original layer back on. And I'm going to uh, flat the image. So merging two uh, layers together. Uh, next, I'm going to uh, try to remove the darker color here. The color again. But this time, I'm going to select the darker color, right? And I'm going to re replace this uh, darker color with the red one. 
Okay, now the darker color is filled. Okay, now I'm going to uh, eliminate the reflection from the uh, scanner. I'm going to use the brush tool. I use the eye drop tool to copy the color. All right, next I'm going to change the color of the, the letters, Coca-Cola. It's So I'm going to copy this uh, color and I'm going to change it. New fill layer. I'm going to change it to the color that I just copied from. Okay, I think we have everything fixed. Okay, it looks uh, it's closer to the original color of the uh, Coke can. And if you compare it uh, with the one from the MAF3, look like uh, A and W a root beer can. Uh, this one is better. The surface of the can is kind of rough. If I smooth it in a third party software, let me show you. Okay, as you can see that if I bring it uh, into the third party software to smooth it, I get a smoother surface. See, this is after I smooth it. But the problem is that you can't smooth the text. If I smooth it here it will blur out the texture so you get smooth surface but a texture is gone and as soon as I import into the a clay model here Adobe Substance Modeler the quality of the texture is declared and after you fix the smoothness then you need to uh, make a UV unwrapped again it will degrade this even more so the best solution is to just use the one that out of the scanner you get the sharpest detail from the texture uh, the top lid looks uh, very uh, real to me we apply a uh, more uh, powder more spray on the top and the surface looks uh, very smooth but I can't apply a thicker layer of the spray for the main body of the can it blocks the, the letters so I think this is uh, very good for um, illustration model okay I hope that you get something out of this video uh, knowing a bit more about MAF3 uh, 3D scanner from uh, Matter and Forms I will put the uh, download link for this model in the description this is the easiest scanner to do uh, this kind of uh, 3D scanning uh, object with a low feature and color texture scanning thanks you guys uh, for watching I'll see you in the next video